Hi, I'm Jessica and we're here at the F3 event at the Cotton Mill Studios. And we're here with Mike. Mike, could you explain to me how F3 came about? A lot of people were talking about the great talents of people we have in the building. And uh, I'm not sure who said it, but most people say it was me. Somebody said, uh, well, we really ought to have an art show. Um, what I will take credit for is that I did start send out an email and say, hey, we should start meeting and talk about having an art show. And uh, it really uh, it took on a, a mind of its own. It just took off. The first show we had, two to 300 people. Um, here we're probably pushing 800, so it's uh, it's grown a lot. Yeah, sounds great. A lot of progress over a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, we've we've done a lot of growing, a lot of very fast growing, um, learning along the way. Uh, we we had some pretty big mistakes early on, like at the first time we had a shuttle, we didn't tell anybody about it, and nobody used it. Second time we didn't have enough shuttles, so you know that sort of thing, you know. Although the first fashion show went off great, second fashion show seems to be going great. So, right. some things we get right the first time, everything else working our way up. <laughs> right. So, let's take a moment and go through and see what F3 has to offer. Jessica and I'm here with Monica Harris and Victor Knai. All right, and what is it exactly that you guys do? I am an industrial designer and I also do fine arts along with Victor. And I'm a game designer and I also do uh, or study game design and also do uh, art, fine arts with uh, Monica. What drew you to do to do these? Probably our bringing up, just yeah. what we were naturally involved in as a child. Okay, it really is fine. The similarities and the difference, like the. Yeah, similar to this, we, the stuff we share, the thoughts we share, and also the differences that we have together and that we can collaborate on and work together on. So what would you say was the weirdest thing you guys have ever been inspired by? Each other. Each other. Each other. <laughs> That's cute. Okay, so what, where can we find your things online? You can. Okay, so where do we go? There's on, the only prints that you'll see of them are on our walls right now. We don't have anything online right now. All right. So very exclusive. Must come here to see. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We're here now with Victoria Scarpa. And we're here at Float. Can you tell me a little bit more what Float's about? Float is a urban art spa where you can float away your troubles and enjoy fantastic art. Okay. So I heard it's a sensory design deprivation chamber? That's um, one way to, to characterize the, um, the experience. You are deprived of senses in the sense that you were by yourself alone with um, floating with 10,000 pounds of Epsom salt and you completely float and you can release your muscles and relax. And I've also heard that it's great for physical therapy. It's incredible for physical therapy. Actually I remember working out once and being in a lot of pain and floating took it away completely. It was amazing. I can believe it. Oh wow, well, that sounds like we'll have to try it out later. You need to try it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where can others come to find Float? Thefloatcenter.com. Check it out. Alright, thank you very much. We're here now with Tamara. Tamara, what is it exactly that you do? Um, I work a strange shift. I'm a remora and work for uh, lawyers at night from 4 p.m. until midnight, Monday through Friday. But I like, I have a passion for coffee, so in the mornings I make espressos. And obviously an, if I, a passion for motorcycles, motorcycles as well. Motorcycles, painting, motorcycles and horses are my other passion, but um, this is my 1963 Ironhead and it's a monster. Perfect. So what drew you to espresso? Um, I've always liked coffee and I've always liked coffee that tastes really good. It's, it's kind of important to me. It should taste as good as it smells. And so educating people about coffee that is really good and <laughs> there's an art in it. Yeah, the art, the art to espresso. Yes. Alright, so where can people come to find your espresso? My espresso is called High Flyer Espresso. It's located in the Cotton Mills Studios in Suite 111. And I'm open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 11. Right. Perfect. We'll find you there. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. We're 
here now with Benjamin. Benjamin, what is exactly that you do here? So I, uh, I make mechanical sculpture. Most of it is uh, interactive and some of it is more abstract and some of it is more practical. Very cool. So what would you say is the craziest thing you had to do to make a mechanism work? The craziest thing that I had to do, it just, it just came to me. Um, I built a lollipop licking machine. Okay. Um, that's why, if you take a look around, there's, we actually have a lot of lollipops here. Um, and you're welcome to take one. Um, uh, and in order to build a lollipop licking machine, I had to make a tongue, a, a human tongue. Okay. Um, and I tried to cast my own tongue in rubber, but I was unsuccessful. So I ended up going to a taxidermy supply store where they had a wall full of different animal tongues. And I picked out the one that was closest to a human tongue, which turned out to be a, a black bear. And um, I recast the black bear tongue in silicone, and it came out looking exactly like a human tongue. So where can we find your work online? So I have two websites. Uh, one is benjamincowden.com, uh, and the other one is 27gears, one word spelled out, dot com. Okay, so we'll find you there. Thank you very much. All right, we're here now with Paul. Paul, what is it that you do? We do sign installations. Okay, what got you into sign installations? Uh, my buddy, my business partner, is in uh, sign manufacturing and installing for 15 years. I have a fleet of bucket trucks that were just sitting, so he said, let's partner up. Okay. We've been doing it ever since, doing great. Okay, that's great. So what would you say is perhaps the craziest project you've ever had to do? I would say that a full store build out in Malibu, we packed up the entire business in our van, headed on the road, and in three and a half days built out an entire store inside and out, full graphics. Oh wow, and just in it from a van to an entire store. Yeah, we didn't think it would fit, but it did one of these tables, half the business, and got it done in three and a half days. Very impressive. So where can we find you if we need help having a three-day installation from a van? I would say uh, the best way to reach us is at uh, bazzy.pro and uh, find us real easy on the web. All right, so we'll find you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're here with R.W. Hawkins. So what is it exactly that you do? So I do large format black and white photography um, and kind of the traditional dark room silver gelatin prints. Instead of the rapid gunfire photo shoots that yeah, I do. shotgun <laughs> photography. I mean, you know, these days with digital, you know, photography, you can shoot 100 photos and it doesn't cost you anything at all. But that would uh, make me broke pretty quickly if I did that. What do you do to inspire yourself when you're going out to take photos? I mean, for me, it's all about internal exploration. I mean, these are the things I photograph are things I'm very interested in, even if I didn't have a camera in my hand. I'm really fascinated by, you know, the old school machinery, machinery that we used to make um, for these Anasazi prints. I'm really fascinated about what these ancient people, you know, what they made with their own two hands. So, I mean, that for me is, you know, the inspiration behind it. And where can we find your work? So um, online, it's uh, www.rwhawkins.com. Um, also on uh, you know, Flickr, Twitter, and Facebook. So just look me up, R.W. Hawkins Photography. All right, I'm going to have to go look it up online now. All right, like me. <laughs> <Okay>, thank you. <laughs> All right, we're here now with David. David, what is it that you do? I'm a painter and a sculptor. All right, and obviously we're in a room full of some of your fabulous paintings. So what would you say was perhaps the craziest thing that you ever had to do to complete a piece? There was a piece of sculpture that I had to place out on a cement pedestal in an estuary that a client purchased from me. And we had to take the pieces out in the boat and uh, bolt them together from the boat. And, uh, it was pretty challenging to say the least. The estuary, I imagine you were doing it in a wetsuit. Yeah, actually, we all had wetsuits on. <laughs> I guess we kept falling in the water. And there were some, uh, some pretty perilous moments there where uh, the weight of, as you can see with the sculpture, there were some of these pieces weigh hundreds of pounds and try to save them from going down, and we'd have to place them back up and capsize the boat. A small boat, but uh, Sounds like a long journey to get that piece set up. <laughs> 
So where can we find your work? Um, Art Slant. David Coderre at artslant.com. All right, I'll have to go on there and check out some more of your work. All right, thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking with you. Now with Zoe. Hi. Zoe, what is it that you do? Hi, I'm Zoe and I'm the fashion director for F3 at the Cotton Mill. Okay. How did you get involved with F3? I live here <laughs> and I'm a fashion designer. I have my own line and uh, a bunch of really great artists and designers came together and decided to create this quarterly show. So I'm one of the designers that got involved. All right, perfect. What's one thing you know now that you wish you had known when you got started? I need more minions. <laughs> Many, many more minions. Complete with evil cackle. Of course. <laughs> and I have the evil cackle. I just need the minions. <laughs> Perfect. So where can we find you online if we want to be your evil minion? Uh, I'm at zoehong.com and it has links to my blog and my Facebook and my Twitter and my LinkedIn and everything you need to know about me. Pretty soon you'll know more about me than I know about myself. And you can also find me at f3oakland.com. We'll find you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Hi, we're here now with the D Adams. So how is it that you got into, what is it exactly that you do? I am actually a vintage dealer. Um, didn't really think I would start out that way. I was a collector, but eventually the space fills up, the house fills up. You have nothing to do but get rid of it. So I wanted to pass it on to people that would love it. And I found out that more often than not, I would meet a lot of people that also had the same love but couldn't find the items. So I now sell vintage furniture. Perfect, and you've got some really fantastic pieces here. Thank you. So how would you say is perhaps the most tedious story you had to go through, the most long journey you had to to get one of your favorite pieces you have? Um, I had to wait probably half a year for a bench that's on the other side of the shelving to arrive to be shipped from Chicago. Um, it shouldn't have taken that long, but it did. It got lost several times and finally made its way here. Somehow they lost a bench. They lost a bench. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Somehow, some way they did it. Perfect. So, where can we find your stuff? Where can we find you online? or? Well, you can always find us here. The, sh the pop up shop is open at every F3 event. Um, we're open intermittently, but we have a website. It's called um, DD914, which is actually my name, DD, D E E D E E 914, which is September 14th, my birthday, dot com. So just pop on over and you'll get dates for the next opening, sneak preview photos of some of the items. Yeah. Excellent. We'll have to check that out later. Thank you so much. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, everyone. All right, we're here now with Ken. Ken, what is it exactly you do? I'm a stylist. All right, how'd you get into styling? Uh, I started my career 17 years ago as a personal shopper at Nordstrom, and I branched out and I branched out and started my own company as a stylist. And now I work with uh, actors on television, film, theater, and everyday people. Sounds like a lot of people you work with. Yes, I do. I work with a lot of people. I actually have over th a thousand clients, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very busy. Very, very, very busy. Yes. So what would be one thing that you know now, you wish had known back when you started your business? Um, probably, I wish I would have started this a long time ago, believe it or not. I absolutely love what I do, so I've been doing it for quite some time. And, you know, I think I, I wish I would have known that this is what I was going to love. Um, but I think my training is what brought me to this point. So, I'm, I, you know, I'm glad of the experience, but, you know, I, I don't think there's anything that I regret on, along the way. So where can we find you from Nature's? Uh, you can find me at kennethtodd.com or ken at kennethtodd.com. Right. Yeah. We'll find you there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jessica. joining us tonight at the Cotton Mill Studios for F3. Keep an eye out in October as we're scheduled to have another F3 then. We'll see you there.